People always talk to me about getting a new set of irons, whether it's brand new or second hand. And my first question always is, why? Seen it happen, and if your coach says to you that you need to buy a new set of clubs to learn golf with, then walk out the door. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon down here at Burford Golf Lab, and today we're going to be talking about five reasons why you should and then shouldn't buy a new set of irons because when it comes down to irons, you can't have it all. You can't have distance and control. You can't have forgiveness and feedback. It doesn't work like that. So I want to talk to you why you should go down the route of thinking about either second hand or a brand new set of irons for your game and why you shouldn't even contemplate the idea yet for whatever reason. Guys, if you like this video, leave it a like, subscribe, if you are new to the channel, let's get straight into it. So the top reason to get a new set of irons is distance. Every person, 80% of the people that I have in this room, when I go, what do you want from your new set of irons? It's distance. Now there's two types of people. Someone that needs the distance and someone that doesn't need the distance. The people that need the distance potentially need to go down this head route where it's much thicker. Every manufacturer is going to have one. Just the same, every manufacturer is going to have a head design like this. If you want to come to me and use a blade and gain distance, you're dreaming. It's not going to happen. Delofted, high CG, basically in the back of the head, is going to produce a high launching low spin shot, i.e. you're going to get more distance, as well as graphite shafts, club fitting experience over the last five years. That's what's made the distance gain so big. Not necessarily the technology, but the equipment and the numbers that we can now look into it. Also, side note, if you already hit 150 plus with a seven iron, let's say 150 to 160, and you come to me and go, Simon, I want more distance for my new set of irons, I'm going to say, why? Because you've got eight irons in the bag. Use them. You don't need a seven iron to do 180. It's just too uncontrollable. Second reason for changing your irons. You're getting better as a player. So potentially you started the game with something very much like this. Thick, chunky. You need that feedback. You need that feel. You need to know when you've hit a bad shot. As well as you've got more control. My first set of irons I had were R7XDs. They were very forgiving. They made the ball go an absolute mile. However, if I was caught in the rough and I hit my eight, nine, seven iron, whatever it is, I could not tell you how far that thing's going, whether it's gonna land 20 yards short of the green or 40 yards out the back. The smaller the head, the more idea you have of how far that ball's gonna go and how consistently you're gonna know your yardage is. Number three is custom built. And this isn't the be all end all. And especially you don't have to spend a fortune to get custom built irons. You can use very reasonable manufacturers. I did a video on Ben Ross the other day and you can definitely get fitted for Ben Ross clubs. However, even though it's not going to drop your handicap by 10 shots getting custom built irons, having a set that you know are built not only statically, i.e. how tall you are and everything else, but also at impact, something that's going to favour your game, favour your swing, favour your bad shot and it means any work that you're going to put in between now and the next five years using these custom built clubs because if you're swapping your clubs out every year or every other year there's something wrong. These irons when you're going to practice for the next five to ten years with them at least you've got the confidence knowing the tools that you're working with are the best for your game. Number four looks. Stay with me. If you come to have a club fit with me or you see a new set of irons or you see an old set of irons on eBay and you like the look of them or even better when you've got it in your hands i.e. having a club fit and you stand over it and you love the look and feel of that club I'm more than likely going to go down that route than another head that produces better numbers and here's why. If you find a set of irons that you feel very confident, very positive and very happy about, you're going to play better golf. Better than any numbers. Because if I make you take this iron head that I say launches better, spins better, when you go out and play with it on the golf course and you look down on it and you're resenting the look and feel of that head, you're going to play bad. It's going to get in your head and all of a sudden the club that was good on the day is not going to be very good for you then. So it's a bit give and take, but looks is one of the reasons why 
you should change your set of irons. If you don't like the look and feel of your irons, the mental side of the game is a massive factor that people overlook and it can definitely improve your game. Number five, inheritance. Because what else are you gonna spend that money on? So they're the five reasons and the five questions I normally ask people when they come for a fit or they ask my advice on a second-hand set of clubs is what do you want from it? And irons are very much black and white. You're either going to have very forgiving, high launching, no feedback, tons of feedback, control, no distance and hardly any forgiveness. And then all the irons in between. So when you see Taylor May, Callaway, Mizuno, they'll have four heads, five heads in their range to suit every type of player. You've just got to slot yourself in there. So let's get into the five reasons why you shouldn't buy a new set of irons. Number one, adverts and marketing. The fastest ball speeds, the highest launching, the most forgiving, so on and so forth. We are talking about a lump of metal on the end of a steel or graphite rod. There is only so much that can be done. I'm not saying that over the last 10 years, improvement, forgiveness, MOI has not increased. However, for the margins that are produced for your amateur golfer, are you going to see the difference? No, so do not get sucked into the adverts and marketing. What I would say, however, just like I did in the do's, this experience of getting fitted with someone that hopefully knows what they're talking about, having a launch monitor, which we didn't necessarily have ready available for six, eight years ago, gives you a much better idea of what irons would be best for your game. However, if you just go and buy a set of irons purely because you think it's the new best thing, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. Number two is probably one of the reasons why I do so much secondhand reviews on my channel is because I've seen this happen in my past experience. Coaches saying they literally can't teach people until that person gets new clubs rather than the other way around. I'm a massive believer in I could teach anyone, probably because my ego is so huge, I can teach anyone with their set of golf clubs. Now, I'm not saying a coach advises you to change your golf clubs. I've been there, I'm telling people with hickory shafts, honestly, you're gonna have a better experience and the game's gonna be easier with today's technology, but I'm not gonna tell that person I'm not teaching them until they buy a new set of irons. I've seen it happen and if your coach says to you that you need to buy a new set of clubs to learn golf with, then walk out the door. Number three is you've just started playing. Do not go and spend a lot of money on your equipment when you've just started playing the game, mainly because your swing's gonna take the biggest transformation over the next year than it ever will do in the rest of your golfing career. Have some lessons, have a bit of practice, then potentially have a look at going down and getting some irons or woods or whatever it is fitted to your golf game. I know it's an exciting sport, I know it's an addictive sport and it's very easy to get impatient, especially when you're in month one, two and three, you feel that you aren't progressing as quickly because you haven't got the new latest and greatest. It's not the case, honestly. Just keep grinding away, keep using what you're using and then after a while, once you've had your course of lessons or whatever it might be, then have a look because you're going to see a massive benefit. Otherwise, you're going to get a new set of irons and you're going to have to trade them in a year later for something that's actually suited to your golf game. Number four is how often do you play? Work it out. And this is how I value people that spend a lot of money on their equipment and people that don't spend that much money on their equipment. I've had people that are happily spent four or five thousand pounds on a brand new set of clubs, but they play two, three times a week throughout the entire year. I have one guy that came to me that doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't go out. All he does and loves and has a passion for is the game of golf. So when you break down that five grand over five years, 80 pound a month or whatever it is, and that is his vice, that's what he does, that's his hobby, enjoyment, then that's 5,000 pounds well spent. However, if you play four times a year and you go straight out and decide to buy a new set of irons for the sake of it, hoping that's gonna be the answer for your mate's golf day, unfortunately, it won't be. So take in consideration how often you're actually playing this game, how much you're gonna get out of your clubs over the period of time that you're playing. And number five is probably the most common. 
especially in the lower handicap players. Perfection. The perfectionists. I've had guys come in here, rip the ball, hit it 10 times better than I have, and they're not happy with their irons because they're leaking it five to 10 yards either side of the target throughout the bag. You can't be a perfectionist with this game. There's no iron that could possibly ever be sold to, and as well as any tour pro out there will tell you that you'll have your good days, you'll have your bad days, but if you're struggling to score better, for example, you're 10 handicap to 18 handicap and you're annoyed because your ball's not finishing within 10 foot of the flag each time, it's not your iron play that is costing you shots. It's more than likely the rest of your game. And too often I see people changing their irons two degrees upright, half an inch shorter, one length irons, not one length irons, so on and so forth because they expect to find a set that will be perfect. It's not gonna happen. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Did I do well, did I not? Five do's and five don'ts when it comes to buying a brand new set of irons. Leave me your thoughts down below. If I missed anything out, I'd love to hear them and potentially we might do another video on woods of a similar variety. Guys, see you later.